Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Legacy World Talk, where we can all be open to important conversation regarding various topics related to life transformation, love, happiness, well-being, relationship, and wealth. My name is Nomsa Clara Mnubi. I am the founder of Hope Spring Eternal Introduction Agency and the co-founder of Legacy World Talk. So today I have four experts with me today. And um, I've got Dr. Bigot, uh, Tan, our guest panelist, and I've got Nadi, I ha we have Nadia Dubiel, our guest panelist, and we have Clara, our guest panelist, Clara Rufai, and we've got Kamal Ama, our guest panelist. And I'm going to let our experts introduce themselves also they can lay out their professional credentials. Over to you, Dr. Bigot, please. Thank you, Numsa. Thank you very much. It's such a, an honor and a delight to be able to be here with you. And I am Burjit Tan, and I am a grief transformation and life success speaker, author, and coach. And my specialty is, and my passion is in helping you and those who you love thrive through any adversities and win with more ease and fun. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Bigot. Over to you, Clara, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Clara Rufai. I'm a trained lawyer. I'm also a compliance Thank professional. You, Thank you very much. It's such a, an uncle. I'm also a trained, uh, trained compliance professional, and there are various ways in which I express myself. I express myself as the founder of the Shine Zone, founder, president of the Shine Zone, the creator of the Shine Philosophy, the editor of the Shine Magazine, and I get busy with creating platforms and opportunities for other people to stand up and shine in their authenticity. That's some of what I do. I'm also the host of a weekly podcast that's called The Shine Capsules. Thank you so much, Clara. You have to give me some tips on how you do this job. Business, lawyer, law, please, because it was all demanding. I need some <laughs> tips so I can cope. <laughs> Over to you, Nadia, please. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Nadia Dubiel. I am body intelligence coach and I have my own school called Superhuman Academy. Uh, in my school, I, I teach people basically how to become themselves because, uh, you know, I believe we, our educational system is, is broken and it doesn't empower people. It doesn't teach them uh, the right skills and, and uh, how to reach full potential and lots of um, criticism about it. But uh, yes, I teach people how to be themselves, how to discover who they are, basically how to how to discover uh, what they want to create in their life and, and connect with their higher self. So that's what superhumanity is for me, just your higher self, because we giving too much power to, to our dark side, as we're going to talk about today. <laughs> yes. So that's me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nadia. Kamau, I feel sorry for you. I'm surrounded by women. <laughs> Why do you feel sorry? It's the best thing any man can wish for. I know. A man, a sorry, man can wish for. <laughs> you are the king. You are the king of the house. You're surrounded by queens. I'm, I'm used to it. Like, I grew up with two, two siblings and my mom almost all alone. So it's, uh, I'm used to it. It's fun. <laughs> I'm never right, though. <laughs> Please introduce yourself, Kamal. Although Hello, you've, never, you've never write. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, my name is Kamal Ema. I'm a NLP uh, trainer, master practitioner. I'm a hypnotherapist and a specialist in life purpose coaching. Uh, I'm also the co-founder of my art coach with my uh, partner, Taylor Bond, and we help people create a life of purpose. Very vague statement, but to put it this way, we always have a choice in our life, whether we believe it or not. And in most cases, like Nadia has said, we choose the simplest road or the states where we are unresourceful. Mm. But the choice is always there to step forward and make a better place for our personal life and personal growth. 
Thank you so much, Kamal. So today our topic is why accepting your dark side will set you free. It's part two. We did part one last week. So everyone who is watching this part and has not have not watched part two, please go and watch part two. So I'm gonna ask start with uh, Kamal. What does freedom actually mean or what does it entail? Is there such thing as freedom? from the dark side, <laughs> please take the stage. Thank you, Namsa. And an interesting question with very interesting multiple answers because um, this is based on linguistics and our own definitions. We are five people in this room and each one of us can have a specific and very different definition from the other about what freedom entails for them. So we can start from there, defining what freedom is for each person, but let's put it into a, a general understanding of freedom, um, where I believe that we are chained by society, and we as most people are chained by society, by conformity, by the rules that we are born to follow since childhood, from parents, teachers, um, and we conform to these realities, which not necessarily do let us be free. The freedom that I believe in is the freedom of the mind, the freedom of choice, the freedom of breaking those chains from the norm between quotations, if I may say that, because at the end of the day, we are all unique. And if we all follow the same path, which in a sense, a lot of people do. Like, I'm, I'm going to give you that example of, it is a common given. You go to school, you go to university, you find a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever it is. You get together, you get a child, you have a house, you work nine to five until you are 67, 65, depending on what age you retire. And then you start to enjoy life and travel. And then you die why have a boring life like that? Uh, to me, it's boring. I'm sorry. Uh, why live by the rules of society that I, I don't like? Why force ourselves and be somewhere or be somebody in that case that we do not like to be? Where I'm getting at with that is that I spoke about it before. We all have core values and beliefs. And these core values that we have, with time they get buried deep inside of us because we start saying, oh, wait, I can forget about that. Uh, I need to take that ladder and go up here. Or yeah, my partner, he, she, uh, they don't follow these rules, but it's okay. We can live with that, it's not a big deal. And you start building these false values to yourself, chaining you to a person that you are not. By the time you realize it, sometimes it's too late. Sometimes you have those moments of enlightenment and you say, you put your foot down and you say, that's enough. I need to get back to who I was. And that moment is the moment that I believe is freedom or what that freedom entails when it comes to the dark side. Because you have a misalignment between your subconscious and your conscious mind. And as long as you have that, you will never be free. I like it when you say we are chained, but we are chained by the society or we are chained by our upbringing. And I think basically that is the truth because you have to actually break away for what you've been taught. 
and, and learn some things. And in order for you to be who you want to be, you've got to be different. You've got to shut down the noise. And I think, I hope everyone is, is, is writing down and taking the notes because for me personally, that's what I have experienced with my, the choices that I, I, I have made in my life. And some people didn't agree with the choices. And some people were like, I don't think you can do that. And as you, as you go, as you grow, you, you grow and uh, with personal development, you start realizing actually there is more you can unleash within. So thank you so much. I'm going to come over to you, Nadia. What is your, is there anything you would like to add with what Kamal has just said? Uh, I think Kamal's answer was so beautiful and uh, I saw totally, <laughs> you know, think exactly the same. Uh, freedom is all about um, letting go and, and actually breaking out of all this conditioning and, and rules, uh, what society, parents, school, kindergarten told us about ourselves, because we are put in the box since we are born. And we are being told what to do, how to behave, what to think, who to be, basically. And we actually never, we never truly free in our lives. We, ne we never really understand what true freedom is. And because we never actually get to know ourselves and what is our true potential and what we're capable of creating. Because, and a lot of people don't even know that we are, all of us, every single one of us has a tremendous creative potential because we naturally very creative people but we don't even use our imagination or cre creativity because we always caught up uh, and in this conditioned head <laughs> basically that uh, that you know we, we think too much we, we don't create basically and and that's that's what we are here to do and and freedom and breaking and being truly free from dark side is, is exactly that just realizing your true potential and that you are a very powerful creative being and what other people tell you what opinion of other people whoever around you is it doesn't really matter what matters is to get to know yourself and and learn about yourself and discover who you are and uh, and because everyone is is in the same kind of state of mind every, not a majority i would say 90 more than 90 percent of people probably or i'm not sure i'm just guessing don't know about this so it's not that easy to stand out to be unique and to show yourself because you have to be very vulnerable to do it it is being, uh, so it takes a lot of courage to be free really uh, into this world. So yeah, I'm just gonna add definitely, definitely to, to break free, to be free is just to to realize who you truly are, your true uh, creative potential and, and stop thinking and overthinking and just caring about, you know, what society says, <laughs> because it's, it's not who you are. You are amazing, powerful being. So that, that's, that's true freedom. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nadia. Thank you so much. I, I, I really appreciate your, your comment as well. I think um, is freedom is knowing who you are as a person and knowing who you are comes with mistakes as well. Some people expect you to be perfect. They expect you to be this, but if you know who you are and you you are not doing what everything is doing, like my with me and my family, I'm into personal development, they are not. So I find myself like if things needs to be done, I just get on with it, but with everyone else, there's got to be this, there's got to be this, me, there are no rules. I'm available, got to do things, it's a choice, it's freedom. Although freedom is not complete, but you work on it. So I'm gonna to come to you, Dr. Bigot. Could you please add as well uh, your comment so viewers can have a different views? Sure, thank you so much, Numsa. So for me, uh, true freedom, being able to have true freedom is in addition to freedom being happy, uh, to be free in your mind, um, such as Nadia and Kamal said, which I agree completely, to also be able to have true freedom of your heart. So I tend to take things uh, deep all the way into the, 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 the core of it and to be able to have true freedom of your heart where you from moment to moment, for me personally, um, from moment from moment to moment, 
um, being able to have true freedom is at every moment, regardless of what's going on outside of you, you are able to have a peace of mind and joy as you choose it. And so to me, that is some um, true freedom. Yes, you'll be able to think and everything, and that will contribute to your ease and peace of mind and joy, freedom of your heart. But even as things are restricting, there is a way to tap into your true uh, freedoms where you will be able to, to have freedom of your heart as well. Thank you so much. Freedom of my heart. I am free. <laughs> I'm going to come to you, uh, Clara. I want to hear your comment, please. Okay. Um, thanks for... Well, <laughs> I'm just thinking um, about what I can add to those three amazing expressions about what freedom is. And so I'm going to probably just strip it down to what the perhaps the everyday dictionary definition of freedom is. The understanding of freedom is basically, you know, the right or the freedom to act, the right or the power to act without limitation, without restriction, without a restraint, right? But as Kamal said, you know, life deals you its own blows. Life makes its own choices. Your family, your relationships, just everything as we know it will conspire to put you in all kinds of various different boxes, tags, labels, all sorts of things. And I think that in that sense, freedom is when we give up our right. You know how sometimes when someone is being arrested and the arresting officer says, you have the right to remain silent because anything you say or do will be used in evidence against you. <laughs> I sometimes feel like life does that to us. Life tells us you have the right to remain silent or anything you say or do will be used in evidence against you. And the world does that because when I make my choices and when I make take my decisions and I do things, I mean, just as you've, you've said you've experienced Nomsa, then the world judges you, your family judges you, your friends tell you, why are you doing this this, this this way? You know, I remember when I was about to go into my, and to explore my entrepreneurial side, you know, from maybe 25 years being a lawyer, a corporate lawyer and all of that. I remember feeling kind of like struggling with the imposter syndrome and telling myself, you know, what would people think? What would people say? Just because I had gone to school, I had studied to be a lawyer, and I had practiced law for like half of my life. So I kind of felt like I didn't have a right to express myself in this other way, but that was a lie. That was me keeping myself imprisoned. And so I realized that the power was mine to grant that freedom, that right of freedom to do and express myself in any way that I choose was mine and if I give it up that's the only time when I lose it and I keep this I keep saying this um, is one of the quotes in my book where I say that um, no one takes your voice from you but you lose it when you refuse to use it you lose it when you stop speaking you lose it when you stop you lose your right when you give it up basically so I would say that when life deals you that blow or that you know tries to pull that fast one on you by saying you have to remain silent you cannot express yourself I usually tell that voice back in my head I tell that voice I say listen I've earned the right to speak up I have earned the right to I give up my right basically to remain silent I decided years ago that I'm done with that I'm no longer going to be sitting on the sidelines of my life waiting for people to make decisions I'm going to jump right into the sand pit I'm going to get my hands dirty I'm going to do the work that needs to be done for me to show up how I want to show up in the world so to me that's freedom when you give up every restraint every limitation every hindrance you give up the you know, mental script, external influences, whatever it is, you give it up and you stand only in the true authenticity of what you feel to be right, what you know to be right that will help you to achieve, how do I put it, the, the highest purpose of your life because we've got all kinds of different little purposes, you know, this feeds into this and this feeds into this and then there's the overarching, you know, purpose of life. So when you know what that purpose is and you shrug off, ignore, resist and fight against and win and conquer everything that's trying to pull you away 
from that past that you know you should be traveling and you're able to just express yourself in your truth, in your authenticity. That to me is what true freedom is. Thank you so much. That was really powerful. Thank you so much uh, for amazing uh, people with the different opinions. And But it's all different. You're speaking different by speaking the same language. It's all come down to knowing who you are and um, be the person that you want to be, your true authenticity, like Clara is saying. You cannot go wrong if you show people, if you show up the way you are meant to show up and be the person you want to be. And this is something that I, my parents taught me, basically my father was a teacher. My father taught me, basically coached me when he, when I was young and when I turned 18 and left home. And that's when he start wanting to fit in. It doesn't work. It's a depression. When you try to fit in with someone, it doesn't, it doesn't work. If there are some people there who are watching and you are in, in this age of 18, 25, don't try to fit in and let people see the real you. If they don't like it, those people, they're not meant to be with you. And there's one thing that my friend told me, she said once that not everyone that is in your life is meant to be your friend. So if you know that, because everyone enters your life for different reasons. So if you just gonna try to fit in with this and fit in with that, like I have four amazing speaker here and you guys are all amazing, but you have different journey and you have, you're impact, impacting the world in different ways. And that is amazing. So how, I'm gonna come to you, Kamal. How will a person know that they are actually free from their dark side? I know we can't be completely free, but we have to work on it. But how, ca how can you know that actually I'm in the right path? This is where I need to, I should be going. So that question, um, to me, it entails something a little bit different. To me, it means, um, it talks about forgiveness. It talks about self-forgiveness to start with. Um, and that's one of the hardest actions one can take towards oneself. Forgiveness isn't necessarily about letting go and forgetting. You know the saying, uh, forgive and forget? Well, if you forgive and forget, it means you never learned the lesson. That means somebody will do the same thing to you. So <laughs> there's no point. Um, I'd rather one says forgive and learn, right? Uh, or forgive and remember. Um, but it also entails something else is that if you forgive somebody, you can remember it for yourself, but you don't bring it back. As in a simple example, right? A normal couple fighting, uh, somebody does, one of them does something. Uh, the other says, I forgive you. Five years later, you remember when you did this five years ago? <laughs> you haven't forgiven that person. That that's, doesn't work. <laughs> so that's not forgiving, right? Uh, Back to it, forgiveness is accepting that you have been hurt or that you yourself have hurt somebody. It's realizing that the longer you hold on to that grudge um, you have against yourself, the more you are poisoning your mind. Um, the analogy is like pouring poison for somebody and drinking it yourself. Like it will just eat you from within. Um, it sends the conversation a little bit more towards self-concept and the not self. And before I go into that, like I should probably explain what it is. So the not self has been talked about and it's a part of you that you believe yourself not capable of being a false me in a sense, right? So nothing good or bad about it, just the mind identifying with something that you are not. A simple example would be, for instance, uh, kicking an animal, like a dog or a cat, for no reason. And you see that happening in front of you, and you tell yourself, I'm not that kind of person. And what you've done here is that you've identified as the person who does that first, in order to deny it to yourself. Uh, why, why do we complicate things so much for ourselves? And, and shake our own beliefs 
And why not simply say, I care for animals? And that's it. In that sentence, you have become a, you have provided yourself with enough clout for your mind to support your beliefs as a caregiver for animals, as an animal lover, as perhaps even a protector. So the self concept is, is a fascinating topic and I mean, we could go on for hours on it. Um, and it brings me back to the original question, right? How do we, uh, how can we know that we freed ourselves from it? And I think it's, it's more on the understanding that we can, we are capable of forgiving ourselves and others without remorse, without regret. Um, the choice, again, at the end, it's a choice. It's always a choice in your hand. And some people believe that they have no choice. That's true. You can be in the most drastic situations. You still have a choice. And that's the, that's the idea of how to know where, when you are free from, your, from yourself is that, that part when you can truly say, you know what, I have absolutely no regrets in my life. I know I've done some choices. They're not bad. They're not mistakes. I've done choices in my life. They have resulted in the place where I am today. I have forgiven myself for whatever I didn't know. Because back then I was ignorant or I only knew that and out. That to me is the definition of how we can really know that we have freed ourselves from that dark side, as we call it, because we can make more accurate, more resourceful and better choices in our life. Thank you so much, Kamal. You, so, you sound like what I was doing yesterday. Basically, I was praying yesterday, but without realizing it was the day before yesterday, I find myself, I'm in court. Basically, I'm putting God in court. I'm asking him, okay, this is what is going on. We know we have sinned on earth, but what all this coronavirus that is going on, because you know, when you are doing a personal development and you want to be free. So when you know that you have to use your beliefs, it's always like, we we need to be free from this. This cannot go on. And so many things are, I'm, I'm putting so many things, like the things I've done, I know that the things I've done wrong. And I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm putting everything out there. I'm like, this, it has to stop. If it's something that we've done on earth or we have sinned, so we, we, we acknowledge what we've done. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. It, it's like, it, it's knowing who you are and where you want to be in life and embracing your, uh, what, your, your beliefs as well. I'm gonna come to you, Clara. Please, would you like to add, how will a person know that they are actually free from their dark side or is there any freedom? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I know that. Thanks for that, Kamal. I know that some people will say that freedom is relative and maybe in a sense it is. Maybe it's not absolute because sometimes you are emotionally free, but not financially free. Sometimes you have lots of money sitting in your bank account, which means you can like desire a thing and just be able to pay for it, but you're not emotionally free. So there are all kinds of freedoms, you know. Um, so, yeah, so I take the view, you know, I, t I take your point, Nam, so when you said that freedom is a journey, perhaps it's a journey that we never come to the end of. So you are traveling along your journey and you find something that threatens to limit or restrict you or put you in a kind of prison, whether it's a mindset prison or physical or any other kind of prison, a relationship prison, a prison of pain or whatever, and you deal with that situation, you overcome it, you conquer it, and you carry on on your journey. That's not to say you're not going to encounter another attempt to imprison you, you know, as you get older or as you travel along your journey. So I totally agree with uh, what Kamal said when he said that forgiveness is actually a very salient part of knowing that you are free because some of us, let me tell you something, um, a story about a lady that I once you know, had uh, the opportunity to deal with, I had the opportunity to cancel her. So apparently when she was much, much younger, she had uh, been in 
a relationship that her family did. She was way too young for that relationship. So she got pregnant um, in that relationship and she had had to terminate the pregnancy, but the act of, you know, based on maybe religious beliefs, the act of terminating that pregnancy was something that filled her with lots of guilt. So years later as an adult, she was now in a loving, nurturing relationship with an amazing person. She was married, she had the license and all of that. And she was now trying to fall pregnant and have children and start a family. And that wasn't happening. And she didn't see herself as the course or the reason for it not happening. So herself and her partner had to go to several doctors, took several opinions, first one opinion, two, three opinions and all of that. But all the medical um, checks didn't really show anything wrong with either of them biologically. And then eventually it was when she was working with a lifestyle coach, a life, you know, lifestyle coach who sort of brought out her thinking, which was that she held herself responsible. She was full of regret and she had never forgiven herself for terminating the pregnancy way back when she was much younger. And so because of that, she deemed herself unworthy to be a mother. So that was basically standing in the way of her falling pregnant. That was it, nothing else. So they then began to work on her mindset. And until she got to that point where she freed herself from that prison, this was a prison of her mind, a prison of her own making. But when she freed her of the problem, freed herself and overcame that feeling, she immediately fell pregnant started a family and she has, I think, two or three children now. What am I saying? I'm saying that I will and when you become aware, if you feel like the choices, as Kamal said, if you feel like the choices you have made have perhaps contributed to this problem that you have, to this dark side that you are experiencing, which is limiting you, hindering you, and you've made that decision that, you know, thus far and no more, I want to be free from this, I want to move on, and I want to live the best life that I possibly can, that is awareness. Then you start by forgiving yourself and just basically just call it what it is, you know, these are... I am where I am. Yeah, things are the way they are for me right now. My current circumstances are as a result of decisions that I have made, actions that I've taken or inactions, if you like, and I just need to let it go. Forgive myself, just let it go and start all over again. The good thing is life gives us many loads of second chances. <clears throat> life gives us second chances. They're called new horizons. So the moment you come to that realization, you give yourself the opportunity to transcend, you know, from one horizon into another. And it's always beautiful, you know, when you do that. So I would say that first and foremost, be aware that you have that problem. When you become aware of it, you then express it. It's not by hiding from it, which is why I like Kamal's, um, you know, comment where he said, you have to forgive yourself. Self. If you don't admit the problem, then you haven't really forgiven yourself. You haven't learned from it. You're not better by it. You're just, you, you've not, you've thrown away a good opportunity to grow and be better, right? Because every lesson we learn in life helps us ascend that ladder of maturity, so to speak, as we grow. So first and foremost, you know, be aware, forgive yourself, express what the limitation is, what the problem is, what the dark side problem or dark side situation is that's limiting you, express the ways in which it is limiting you. And just begin to reimagine a future where that problem didn't exist, where that mindset didn't exist. What would it be like? What could you do? What could you be? What could you achieve? Imagine it done. Imagine that glorious future without that problem limiting you and then begin to transform yourself. And that may be that you um, wake up to the reality of your situation, get other people to help you because I believe in human harnesses. As I sit here, I don't know everything that Nadia knows. I don't know anything that, everything that Dr. Baguette knows. I certainly don't know everything. He, you know, Kamal is an NLP expert. I don't know everything that he knows. So definitely if I'm dealing with a problem that I know he can help me solve, I'm going to go to him and I'm going to make him, you know, in that moment of my life, my human harness that can lead me and guide me from where I am to where I want to go. So ask the right questions of the right people. Take those answers honestly when they're given to you. Use implement, transform your life. 
And when you do that, I think that you will find yourself coming out of the darkness into the light, leaving your, if you like, your dark side behind and coming into your glorious, you know, future that's full of light and love and laughter. You know, call me a romantic, but that's how, <laughs> that's how I think of it. And I think that it's powerful when we can do that for ourselves. Thank you so much, Clara. I think you know what's coming. I'm still holding my the light, light. <laughs> from the, the light. dark side. I'm holding my light. It is my light, guys. If you don't want to hold yours, I'm holding my light. I'm putting my hands up and I'm saying light. Yes. Light. No darkness in my life. <laughs> no darkness. I don't want to feel sorrow for myself. I want to live life to the fully. I want to make charge. mistakes. Take charge. I be who, who I want to be. Thank you, Clara. Thank you, Kamal. Dr. Bigot, please add. I've got the light up for myself. Thank you, Numsa. Um, yeah, the, um, so the question is, uh, is, how will a person know that they are actually free from their dark side? And to me, uh, to me personally, uh, it's, a pro it's a progress, actually. We, we actually never 100%, if you want to continue growing, and I love how you actually already kind of show your, uh, help me show the answer, Numsa, by holding your light. You cannot be 100% free from your dark side at all time, unless you at moment to moment choose to be free. Uh, it's just almost like a country the same way, right? The, the country, it's everything is a progression. And as we might be free from this one particular thing, we might be free, we might overcome this one particular dark side that we have. But as we grow, and if we choose to continue to grow, like Clara says, you know, we all have a choice. You have to choose. And, uh, and so as Kamal says that, you know, if we choose to continue to grow, then you will encounter more things. It's like you, now you shine with your light, um, Numsa, the, uh, this, amount, uh, this amount of light and this amount. But as you go to, toward the edge of that light, then you need to bring more light and keep your lights on and you will encounter as you uh, as you uh, go to the border of the light that you currently have you will encounter darkness again and you will choose you will choose to shine the light on that and progress and progress and so it's a it's a, to me it's a uh, it's a progression it's a continuous growth of being able to be more and more free and bring more and more light and so that's uh, to me that's how it, it is with the um can, uh, can we can we have a uh, full freedoms completely and if you at some point you choose to not shine your light anymore well you'll be back in the dark actually and so to me full freedom is choosing to continuously bringing light like you said keep holding your light and bringing light into your uh, into your own life and also bringing light into your uh, surrounding, into your community, into the world, into life in general. And that's when you'll be able to have a constant um, freedom by choosing it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Bigot. I'm still going to lift my light up. Over to you, Nadia. Wow, what wonderful answers. Uh, I really love being part of the show and this conversation. It, it's so amazing. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I like add a little bit uh, to everything, to what everyone said. And I start from what Kamal said uh, about choices and consequences. So in my thought of, of school, there is no good or bad. There are choices and consequences. So, um, and that's all it is. And, you know, the, the lady that Clara was talking about, she, she chose to feel guilty about, you know, uh, abortion. And as a, as a consequence, she couldn't, she couldn't fall pregnant. And um, every single one of us, we have a choice, as, you know, Kamal says as well. And, you know, whatever we create in life, it's going to be consequence of what we choose to, to do, to think, uh, how to behave today. So what we do today will reap, will create our future. And that's why it's very, very important to, to choose to focus on what our hearts truly want. 
because a lot of people they choose to um, they choose to con um, to focus basically on on horrible things or maybe that someone hurt them uh, they feel guilty about something they feel ashamed they hold on to all of this pain and suffering that maybe someone else caused to them maybe they created themselves and and they they keep you know uh, focusing on this um, negative uh, emotions and and holding on to the past basically. So they will keep recreating it. Uh, so the whole point is to really learn and um, what our heart truly wants and choose uh, to, to focus on what we want to really create in our life, what we dream about. Uh, and you can test it if you really, uh, so the freedom is to, uh, when you know when you truly free is when you open your eyes and you see the life that you really wanted to see. If you see a horrible place, people you surrounded, you're still in that, you know, you know, in, you're not in the place where you want to be. You know that you're choosing uh, to focus on your past. You, you recreating your past. But when you open your eyes and you have the life that you you want, you know that you are free because you have you you choosing what you truly want and what your heart truly wants and what is your true potential so you always have those two choices you either want to recreate the past and and cling on to being a victim in your life and and being negative and then just uh, creating more conflict and being stressed or you can focus on uh, you know wonderful things that you want to do in life and that you want to achieve and and, and create that life because every time when you open your eyes and the life is not the way you want it to be, you choose in the past to create that, uh, that life. So it's very, very important that um, every single second you choose what your heart wants. If you want to be happy, if you want to feel joy, uh, gratitude, appreciation, all of these beautiful um, emotions and, and just feel fulfilled and have that inner peace you need to really break down break out from uh from this victimhood from from being negative from you know not forgiving someone not forgetting something someone whatever because uh that that's the choice that we have and that's the choice that you have and to realize that you really have to get to know yourself you really have to go deep within and see what is holding you back because if you don't really know what's holding you back you will never be able to shift that power uh, to, to your heart because it will still be there in the background dragging you down and it's going to be more difficult of course so yeah true freedom is you know when you uh, when you uh, to know when you're free is basically when you open your eyes you have life that you really want to have if you don't have it it means that you're choosing you are choosing not anyone else to um to be that victim to, you are choosing the dark side to win basically over you and the freedom is just when you really open your eyes and you see these beautiful, wonderful things that you know uh, you want truly in yourself, deep inside yourself. So yeah, that is that's and, and as uh, Birgit said before, uh, it's about the heart. Freedom is is about the heart. It's um, that's all it matters. It's what your heart truly wants, because that's when you really truly can be free. And of course, dark side will appear from time to time, but the whole point is not to focus on it because you, you know, when you choose to focus on it, you will create it in the future again, and it's gonna uh, sabotage your your potential. Basically, I don't know if it makes sense. I hope it does. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely, it does, Matia. Thank you so much. You say dark side and light. I choose this one. I choose the I choose the light. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And and Dr. Bigot, I put I put my light in my heart. Clara, I put my light in my heart. Kamal, I put the light in my heart. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. So how do we actually accept? Uh, now I've chosen the light, and how do I accept uh, the freedom? Uh, I know it's a process, but how can I accept that process instead of me getting rid of the choices that I now I have made I'm in the right path, Kamau, how do I accept it completely and live the life that I want? Short answer, just live it. Just live it. <laughs> I'm living it. I'm <laughs> living it. I'm you're, the light. you're asking a question that is... Uh, 
how, what was it again? How do we accept living that life? Is that yeah. it? Yeah. Now I've accepted the light because Nadia said there is two choices, dark side and uh, light. So how do I accept it and actually live it and continue living it instead of uh, uh, sabotaging myself and listening to the world and going back to where I was? Okay, so if you have already accepted it, right, that is your choice. You have made the decision to change. Once you have made that decision to change, grab a hold of those that can help you. Friends, loved ones, people that are actually pushing you forward to your utmost potential. People that can support you. People that don't bring you down, but say like encourage you to live the life that you want to. Funny enough, I just spoke about that a couple of days ago. And it's, it's really the company that you keep, including the company of yourself in your mind. Although we all have these voices in our heads. We all talk to ourselves some way or another. Uh, I have different voices with different accents in my head, for instance, but that's something else. <laughs> but the idea is not to let one specific thought drag you down. Like I said, I'm not that kind of person. Why are you not that kind of person? Why can't you say, I am that person? Or I want to be this person. I would like to be that person. These thoughts that we have in our mind, they're created from the circumstances. Once they're created in our mind, it is our choice to either let them drill deeper holes in our mind and go into our heart and like drill deeper and deeper until everything is infested, or... We can take the thought, think about it, let it go, and then think of a different thought that may be more resourceful, a thought that could help us move forward to our shorter goal so that we can reach our greater goal. And it's all about the steps that we take in life. If you don't grow, you die. Thank you so much, Kamal. Thank you so much. I accept. Thank you so much. Would you like to add anything, Clara? Sure, I would. Thanks for that, Kamal. I'd love to add, um, let me do this because I know that people like steps, right? Five steps to do this, two steps to do that. So let me give, I mean, Amal's nailed it. Kamal's nail, nailed it basically, um, especially with your very first answer, Kamal, where you said, just live. Just live. Do you just know what? Just don't overthink it. Just live your best life possible. But let me try and see if I can give people um, listening to us today some steps. It might make it more, I don't know, easier to implement. So first of all, a friend of mine that I work very closely with, she is um, a lady called, um, she calls herself the queen of expression, uh, an amazing lady, you know, a creative that I work with in my business. There's something that she talks about. There's a philosophy that she espouses that she calls the naked philosophy. And she describes the act of being naked as, you know, it's in a sense, that's her way of describing what freedom is, right? The art of being naked is where you have the freedom to be who you are supposed to be, who you are called to be. And in order to get there, what she recommends is that you go through a process that's called the EAT, E-A-T. So one is the expression. And I think I talked about that in my other comment where I said one is the expression, the other one is awareness, and the other one is transformation. You've expressed what your problem is. You are aware of your problem is you are aware of how that meeting you or affecting you and then you go ahead to begin that process of transformation but once you start that road to on that road to transformation things like fear and all those things come up but I think that fear is not necessarily there you know to to stop us I think fear is there to help us ask the right questions and when we find the answers to those right questions then we are on our way to transform so the first thing is spot the problem become aware um, get clarity about the problem get clarity about how you want to transform get clarity about you know the situation and how you want to go from where you are to where you want to be one thing you have to do in doing that is to be absolutely authentic. Authenticity just means being honest with yourself and with others. 
not living a lie, not telling yourself lies about the reality of your situation or your condition. Second thing you want to do is strip. You want to try not to create barriers because again, barrier it just seems like the opposite of freedom, isn't it? It sounds like you're putting yourself in a prison. So try not to create, try to remove those barriers from around yourself, strip down barriers from your relationships, from your thought processes, from your mind, from everything, everything that limits you in life, strip yourself totally. Remove titles, remove tags, you know, remove all those high faluting words. You, you know, a lot of us who are influencers and thought leaders and people on social media, you know, I kind of struggle when you ask me, introduce yourself, because I struggle to put myself into a box. If I say I'm a lawyer, you don't know the, you know, all the other amazing things that I do. If I say I'm a speaker, there's so many other things that I do. So I struggle to bring it into you know, a brief description of, oh, this is who I am, because I'm so much bigger and so much greater. But I would say that the first step to um, actually becoming free, oh, so one of the steps to actually becoming free, strip yourself, remove the barriers, then reveal yourself in all your truth, in all your honesty. This means now you are standing, I kind of imagine it like standing in the spotlight of your own brilliance and not being afraid or ashamed to, to speak or to be you, who you are. You're no longer afraid to go out there and do and say and act so that people can identify you with your actions and identify you with your words. And that's how you begin to truly shine. Remember how when we spoke last week, I spoke about the process of shining as being a continuous journey where I said, I think of it as the process of soaring higher into new expression. So every day in every way, attempting and trying to be better and better. And I think Dr. Baguette talked about this where she said, it's a journey because you may come across other things that try to limit you, imprison you, other type of dark side situations. And it's a continuous journey. Once you've learned the how, you apply those same things, you rinse and repeat to continue to free yourself from everything that, that tries to hold you. So yeah, be aware, be authentic, be honest with yourself and strip down. Once you do that, you will be able to free yourself. You will be able to come out of darkness into the light. And I like how um, a lady called, um, I think Miriam Williamson, there's a way she described it, I forget now. I think she said um, that what we are most afraid of is not our darkness. What we are most afraid of is our light because we feel like we don't like that woman who was trying to get pregnant and couldn't. She felt she wasn't deserving of motherhood. So we kind of feel our deepest fear is that in this life, we are actually more powerful beyond measure. And we don't know what to do with that power. We fumble with it, we're scared. We think, you know, why would, why would nature, why would God, why would life, why would the universe give me so much power? Oh my God, just me, little old me, what am I gonna do with it? panic. And when we're in that panic mode, we're not able to properly engage our skills, our talents, our abilities to be the best that we can truly be. So free yourself from all those limitations, express yourself, do not mind what anybody would say you are, whether they think you to be an influence, thought leader, a mother, or what, so grant yourself you can do it. As I said, grant yourself that freedom to be who you are called to be, to help the people you are called to help, and to just live your fullest life. Only you can do it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Clara. Only me, I can hold my light. Only uh, me. Yes, indeed. <laughs> that's yeah. why I, that when you were talking about you, when you struggle, that's why I call myself love harmonist, because mm. Uh, I don't know what I can call myself. I, I look at things, I can call myself this. So when people ask me, I tell them I'm love. I'm a love harmonist. This is what I do. I love it, by the way. You, you tell me the lyrics, I play the music. I make things happen. So that's how I describe myself. Thank you Absolutely. so much. We all need and, harmony in our lives. Oh, yes. And now I am holding the light. <laughs> no one is holding it for me. Indeed. Nancy, would you like to add anything from this, please? <laughs> uh, yes, of course. Yeah, what a beautiful answer. And what you said, Clara, about that people are the most afraid of the power. Of course, 100%. Uh, we are um, 
we are afraid of the truth, uh, basically. And I just wanted to add to accept and live in your truth and, and be powerful and in your light is to take action as well. So of course we have to accept where we are first, but uh, I think people start taking on the steps, of course, and, and what, what Clara was talking about and and doing the choices and, and making a plan, it, it's all about taking action. And, and I, I think that's where most of the people struggle the most about um, when, with taking the action. So we have a plan, we have all these dreams, we, we know what we want to do, where we want to go, we, we know we, we want to go on a diet or go to the gym or change something. But then when it comes to it, we struggle to take action. And, and that's where the true power is in, in, in using your will, your free will, actually to do what you're supposed to do, doesn't matter what. Because our mind will come up with excuses as soon <laughs> as, soon as you, you, will, you will reflect on it. So the, the most important thing is just to, to stop overthinking and thinking and, and just sticking to, to your goal, what you know what you're supposed to do. Because as soon as you start... Uh, resting there is a, this uh, this book called five second rule just do it straight away because otherwise your mind will just make up some oh i'm too tired i have to do this i have to do that and, and eventually just you you are being you you are busy <laughs> with things that you you, uh, you you just kind of find yourself things to do that's not very productive and they don't take you anywhere and eventually you just procrastinate thinking that you are doing things that you're supposed to be doing but you, are, you never get anywhere because you are not taking the action that you're supposed to because your ego is sabotaging you. You're giving power to, to your ego basically by not taking action that you know you're supposed to take. So it's really important to distinguish if what are you, you are actually doing is taking you where you, your heart wants you to be or you're actually pretending uh, in front of yourself that you're doing something, but, but in reality, you're not doing anything and you procrastinate. So it's, it's very important that we use our free will. So I know um, in my, what I believe is that our will is one of our senses, but we, uh, we never use it in a proper way uh, because we, we don't, we forget that we have it. So if, if we think that this is our natural ability to use our free will, it's like a muscle to, to, to shift into the right choice, our life will change. So the more you start using your will, uh, the easier, the, the stronger it's going to get. So it, it will be more easy and easier for you to make the right choice that will empower you at the end. So I, all I want to add is just to take action, guys, but action that, that will take you where you're supposed to be, not just any action, because <laughs> that's just a waste of time. So be honest with yourselves, exactly that as well. And, and um, don't pretend that you're doing things that are just pointless and just take the right action, doesn't matter what. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you so much, Nadia. Thank you so much. I'm taking action and I have the light with me to guide me. I fall, I keep this with me. Thank you so much. Dr. Bigot, would you like to add anything, please? Thank you, Numsa. Thank you. Um, it's all beautiful answer. So um, the question has been, um, you know, how to live in your freedom. And I would say, um, what like everybody says, um, like Kamal says, well, just live it, <laughs> which is really, really very true. Um, embrace it, embrace that, that and, and um, taking the actions, choosing them and definitely deciding on um, everything, everything in life. Um, often we forgot, um, we all, only think when we make decisions, it's like big decisions, but ex everything um, in life is actually about making decisions. We actually, there's a study showing, I think we make like 36, uh, every person make 36,000 decisions every single day. And you're deciding how you're going to feel at this moment. You're deciding how you're going to, if you're going to move this hand this way or that way, right? And so, so decide um, that you are going to continue embracing your freedom and um and and uh, the Cla uh, Clara said you know it's uh, the, take the steps um the steps be deciding this uh taking the actions and I like to give people certain keys that they can keep going back to um because that's help um people as well it's kind of like the steps or the keys and to me the keys are to, to be living and uh, continuing to live in our freedom and being able to live freely. Uh, first, you continue to decide and then um, to, uh, to act on it, 
the second one and then to also allow to allow support because sometimes we have enough darkness where or we are surrounded by darkness just like you have your flashlight <laughs> it's to line to help you shine the light of awareness moment to moment and sometimes uh, and being human we're, we're, we're a social creatures and the um uh, and we allow, we want to be able to allow support. Um, there is a saying that you are the five people that you hang out with. And so choose and decide the people that you hang out with that allow you to continue living in your freedom instead of trying to attack your freedom. And then um, I say the other, the other key is to just let go. Let go, first of all, let go the, the let go from your vocabulary. I erase this from my vocabulary, the words such as need, must, have to, no such a thing. I would love to, I, I, I look forward to, but there is no need, no must, no should, no have to, no such a thing. It's, it's uh, if you really, really, truly, it's in, uh, in alignment with your heart, then you love though. Uh, and it's not you need to. There is, you know, there is a difference between the feeling I need to eat or I would love to eat at this moment. <laughs> and so, so to let go, to let go those, and to actually also let go of attachments. In my book, I say it, um, to practice what I call NATO with gratitude. Now, I'm not, uh, I, you know, it has nothing political about that. It's just so uh, make it simple to remember. Uh, no attachment to um to outcome, and because when we're attached, then and we're actually diminishing our freedom, then we start becoming fearful of not achieving our um, outcome. And, and when that happens, it's then we, uh, we were losing freedom. But when we're able to let go of attachments to the outcome and actually just be grateful for it is while continue taking actions and deciding moment to moment and allowing ourselves to have support that's well, I, to me that's the way we are able to um to continue living embracing and enjoying our freedom and and being in the light continuously thank you so Thank you so much, Dr. Bigot. I am, I have the courage to seek help if I need it because I can't do everything myself and I have the courage to hold my light. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So Kamau, is there anything you would like to leave with our audience before we leave? I'll, I'll leave just a, a, a short story. Uh, my, uh, my mentor or repeats, um, if you don't like living in a country, you can move to a new one. And if you don't like living in that country, you can still move again. But what do you do when you can't move away from yourself? So wow. thank you. That's powerful. That's really, really powerful. Uh, actually, this is the question that I need uh, to write down so I can use it every morning for my uh, gratitude. Thank you so much, Kamau. That was powerful. You're like, wow. <laughs> I can move to another country from United Kingdom to somewhere else, but what can I do if I can't move? That means I have to do some work. Thank you so much. Clara, is there anything you'd like to leave with our audience, please? Uh, there is. Um, thank you for that. Come on. That was, that just <laughs> hit me there. I was thinking, okay, you know, that is so true because then you've got to do the work. You've got to get comfortable with who you are because you can't move away from yourself. That is, gives me just lots of thoughts in my head. That is so true. Thanks for that. Um, I would like to, maybe I should just, you know, read out this quote that I was, you know, I talked about earlier, the quote by uh, Marianne, Williamson. This is how it goes. Let me just take it off my, um, she says that our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be so brilliant, so gorgeous, so talented, so fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? Right? <laughs> who are you not to be? You are a child of God. And in that 
be in that, you know, in place of God, you can say universe or you can say whatever higher power you believe in, but you are a child of God. So your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you because we are all meant to shine. My favorite word. We are meant to shine. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in all of us. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people around us permission to also shine. This is what my shine philosophy is about. As we are liberated from our fear, as we are liberated from our dark side, our presence or our who we become then gives permission, who we become inspires others, becomes inspiring to others. And it gives other people permission to also shine, to also free themselves from their fears, to also walk away, you know, overcome and conquer their own dark sides as well. And I'll just share one last quote, something that I wrote last year. It's right here. I'm reading it off of my screen <laughs> right here. I said, you have not conquered ego and you are not ready for real growth until you stop worrying what anyone thinks about you in their heart and you stop caring what they may be whispering about you in their closet. It is none of your business what anybody thinks or what anybody says. No one has a right, as I always like to say, no one has a right to tell you what drum beat to dance to. You've got your music, you've got your music sheet. Do you live and walk in your authenticity. Authenticity is one thing that never grows old. So in trying to free ourselves from our dark side, that's the best advice that I can give anybody. And it's advice that I have personally taken for myself and I continue to take and I continue to apply it as I come across any dark side situation or scenario in my life. I remind myself of that and I re-correct. I sort of like re-strategize and recalibrate. So it's very important to know that it's all in your hands. As Nadia said, it's in your hands. So that's what I would like to live with people today and just say, go with it, get over yourself. Stop worrying what other people think. Just get on with it, get on with life and live an amazing life. Thank you so much, Clara. No excuses, do you? No excuses. What other people think of you is none of your business. None of your business. So much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to come to you now. Do you have anything you want to leave with our audience? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Thank you. Just quickly, I just want to um, add on what I said at the beginning in, in episode one. We, remember, guys, we have a good wolf and a bad wolf. And a uh, bad wolf is, is the one that, cre that uh, creates all these negative experiences in your life, all the suffering and pain and all these negative emotions that you hold on to. And, and good wolf it is your creator. It, it's your light. It's what your heart truly wants. And it's, it's, the, it's the wolf that will bring you more joy, more happiness, more appreciation, more beautiful, beautiful things. And the, the one that will win is the one that you feed the most. So start feeding the good wolf. Start, start feeding your creator side, not the victim side, by taking the action that is um, aligned with your vision, that is aligned with your heart. So start taking actions. Take, uh, just find the courage in your heart to, to take the right action instead of you know pretending you, you're doing something. So just really focus, create a plan, create a, create a strategy and just go for it. And, and don't worry about anything else. Just, just connect with your heart. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going for the light. I don't care what people think of me. I've got my light. I'm going with my light. Anything you want to leave with our audience, Dr. Bigot? Thank you, Numsa. Thank you. Yes. Um, and a couple, uh, two quick things that I would love to leave. Um, well, the first one is, well, like everything else, it starts inside out. Um, Kamal's story, actually, uh, Kamal questions actually remind me to my own um, uh, where, uh, story early in my this part of my journey, the journey that brought me from uh, being a doctor to also um, now uh, do um, personal development and grief transformations. And back then, early in my journey, I was um, looking for places to do silent retreat, you know, where you go there and you are absolutely, there is nobody speaking for three days or a week or what have you. 
for me to be able to have peace of mind, I felt I needed peace and I keep looking for a place for silent retreat. And for one and another reasons, none of them work out. I check out like a dozen places, nothing work out. And I find, and it start to become a lot of fight to be able to do this. And finally, at the very last moment, as I was really attempting to yet another, making another reservation, something says to me, the peace is not out there. The peace come from inside of you. And I said, oh, wow, I can go to silent retreat. We can have all these tools and these actions and everything, and we can keep searching for our freedom. But the, the freedom, when we have peace, we have freedom in our heart and in our, our mind, it's all come from inside of you. Your freedom is in you right now, to, uh, and it is for you to discover and to allow it and to set it and set you free at the same time. And then the second uh, quick thing that I would say is, is um, and regardless what it looks like, because we're all meant to be different and unique, you are wonderful and beautiful as you are. We all, um, we're all lights and just like there are um, you know, blue lights and white lights and yellow light and sparkling lights and so forth, we're all different and we're all meant to be different. So the light that you are, you are wonderful and beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Bigeta. I still have my light and I'm wonderful and wonderful Matt. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, uh, everyone, guys, for taking your time and uh, uh, speaking at our talk show. This is your platform as well, and we appreciate you. And those who are watching as well, we appreciate you, you guys. And uh, Dr. Bigot, our prayers is with you guys with the elections. And I hope everything goes well. Uh, I know Nadia, she's uh, frustrated with the elections, but hopefully everything is going to go well. And thank you so much. And uh, we are praying for America that everything goes smooth. And thank uh, you. If anyone who wants to get in touch with the, all these amazing people, guys, you can go to Legacy Wealth Talk page and get in touch with these amazing speakers. They are amazing. This is what they do uh, for living, and they impact people and uh, their families. And uh, it's, it's amazing what you guys do. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Live with grace, everyone. We'll see you, you next week. Thanks, Namsa. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Namza, thank you everyone. Thanks, thank Namsa. You, everyone. Thanks, everyone.